Okay, I will going, I'm going to talk a little bit about confirmatory factor analysis. Why should we actually use confirmatory factor analysis? There are a couple of different reasons. Uh, the most important one is that it is a really awesome tool to test theory. Another really important feature of CFA is that it accounts for measurement error. So we can take control of all sorts of random measurement effects. And it is really an excellent tool for testing complex multivariate models. So it allows us to approximate a little bit better the complexities of real life when we try and measure psychological constructs. Confirmatory approaches are really useful because they help us to test theory. So they're theory driven. So we have to have some idea of what we want to test. And we develop, based on our theories, we try and de develop some models that we can now test with real world data. So, so you could think of if we have a theory A, we need to create a model that would capture the important aspects. And we may also have an alternative theory B that we can also uh, operationalize, so we can develop a testable model. And now what we need to do is we need to gather some data that can be used to test model A versus model B to give us some kind of information about whether theory A or theory B is more appropriate to account for the data that we have. So that is really the big advantage of confirmatory approaches that we use a theoretical model to test to test it in comparison with some other theoretical model with real data. A bit of terminology here that we will need as we go along. The first one is SEM, Structural Equation Modeling. This is really the big overarching uh, category that encompasses CFA and a lot of other types of models. Among these is path analysis. You might have heard path analysis. Path analysis is a fancy word for a whole class of regression models. We will get to that at some stage in this course as well. Then we have confirmatory factor analysis and we will learn a lot about these in the next couple of um, videos and hopefully we will get to what is called a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis because this is really where the power of CFA lies because we can compare different models from different groups and see how well they actually fit to the data. And then you might come across something called MAX, which is called Means and Covariance Structure Analysis. That's an older term that describes essentially a multigroup confirmatory factor analysis model that allows you to also model the means and the covariances between items. And so it kind of combines ANOVA with factor analysis. So if we want to draw a uh, structural equation model, so a confirmatory factor model or any kind of other model. We need to tell the reader or we need to visualize it in, in some way that others understand what we're using. So if we observe a variable, right, so we measure something directly, we typically uh, put it into a square like this. If we infer a latent variable through, for example, a number of observed variables, we typically put it into a little oval or circle. An arrow with just one, uh, uh, basically an arrow, basically tells us that there's some direction there. So there's some kind of causal link between one variable and another. If we have a double-headed er arrow like this, it basically means that two or more concept or two concepts are correlated with each other. And we may also have a short arrow like this, which indicates that there is something else, a residual or an error term, so something that is also influencing a variable, but we have not measured it. So how to put all of these together? A uh, classic confirmatory factor analysis model would look something like this. We would have, for example, two latent variables. So these are our theoretical constructs that we want to measure. 
we don't observe them directly so that's why they are in these kind of ovals so these are latent factors and they may correlate it they may be correlated with each other so we may have factor correlations hence we have a double headed error here we don't measure we don't measure them directly so we have to infer them that's why we have a number of observed indicators that are thought to be caused by these latent variables so we have item 1 to 4 our observed items and they are causally linked to latent factor 1 and then we have item 5 6 and 7 they are causally linked or we assume that they the expression the responses to these items are caused by an underlying factor 2 and then we have of of course also some error so we have an error component so any kind of variance in item 1 that is not due to our latent variable here is basically an error because it is not caused by the latent variable so it's some other uh, concept that might be measured uh, in item 1 that is not due to our model and we also have the intercepts the baselines these are typically uh, shown in squares or diagonals diamonds like this so this is a traditional confirmatory factor model the cool thing about CFI or structural equation modeling in general is it can help us to look at causal relationships between latent variables so we can develop whole complex very sophisticated latent models so we could have for example a latent variable here that is measured using two items and a latent variable here that is measured with two items and both of them are caused by a higher order factor and this higher order factor influences so th theoretically we assume this one causes uh, another latent variable here which in turn is measured through a number of higher uh, first order latent variables which in turn each are measured through two observed indicators so what we could do is we could bre break down any kind of relationships into what is called a measurement model in a measurement model we look at the features of the latent variables so using my beautiful little squiggles here what we are looking at is how well do these observed indicators for example reflect this latent variable and how do these three latent variables reflect a higher order a second order latent variable and we do the same thing on this side and we essentially test how well our measures are working importantly here the second order latent factors are just assumed to be correlated so we do not do not actually specify a causal direction here in the second step then we can test a structural model and here we have our measurement model worked out and now we're testing what is the causal direction between for example these two latent variables so this is the cool thing about structural equation models in general they allow us to test very complex model with real-world data